G'day, I'm Shane Webke. I'm an ambassador for Queensland Workplace Health and Safety, and I'm with Sharon Howard from AgForce here today. Sharon, I grew up in agriculture. You're obviously involved in it. Yep. What are, what are the what are the most pertinent issues around safety in agriculture? Oh, I think it's it's looking at a, a history of the um, the thoughts around operating safely, but keeping in mind that the operation that we're talking about is involving animals, it's involving machinery, chemicals, children a lot of times, and, and in, in remote areas. So what, 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 are, what are the dangerous situations that typically can happen on a, on a working property? Oh, it's a whole gamut of things, um, Shane. I mean, probably I would think, and not being across all the statistics, I think children would be a lot of the, um, the, the ones that end up hurt on farms and, and probably because we're trying to teach them how to operate in an agricultural industry that has a lot of those those dangerous sort of situations but also probably because a lot of the times that's being led by dad and dads are a lot braver than mums in a lot of cases um, and mums like me quite often get in trouble for being hovercraft mother you know they'll be right they've got to learn they, uh, whereas we're sort of going oh hang on how about we do this and that dad's trying to teach them to be productive and, and useful and um, and you know man up and, and all that sort of stuff. So I think there's a lot around that. But would it be fair to say though, as it was in my family, and, and my father learned his bad habits from somebody else, um, therefore in teaching me some of those things, all those things you talk about in terms of being a practical person and learning how to work and all that are incredibly important. But the safety aspect of it for my dad was really hard for him to know because he'd, he'd actually been raised in a, in a fairly dangerous way himself. Mm. So are we necessarily, us dads, the best people to be trying to teach kids how to do things safely. Yes, but we absolutely have to get to those blokes yeah. with yeah. examples like you've spoken about with your dad and with your son, um, and and that's what cuts through. And and I think that any of those blokes in the bush now that are displaying sensible thoughts around workplace health and safety, uh, it's because they know someone something happened to, or it nearly happened to them, or or um, they've heard stories about a bloke who was something terrible happened to um, and that cuts through so much more so the stories that you tell are vitally important to these sorts of blokes um, and to the women too because it makes us sit there going I told you so <laughs> it gives us some strength in our argument um, but the blokes need to hear that and that's where they learn they're still absolutely the best people to lead the charge Agreed. but we've got to get in their heads so it'd be fair to say that you know where the dangers in agriculture Sometimes it's quite obvious, but it's the attitudes of us in that industry that yep. need to change to, to really march safety forward in our industry. That's right. And the solution is not throwing a pile of paper at these blokes and yep. saying, tick and flick all this and go through that with your workers. That's not going to work for all of it. Some it will, absolutely. Yeah. But there are a lot of very practical, productivity-driven blokes that they will not do that. But they can achieve the same outcomes by doing it a different way, as long as we're not subscriptive about what they have to do, and we get cut through. They'll do it every day of the week. No one goes to work wanting to get hurt. No one goes to work wanting to see their workmate get hurt or their kids damaged. That, that's a no-brainer. What we need to do is make sure that they recognise, the same as the mums, what could go wrong. And, it, and a lot of the time, Shane, they're big, strong blokes. They're, they're physically fit blokes. They're muscly. They're, you know, they're across all this stuff. And it's the same as, you know, my husband putting me on a horse that, that he knows he can handle and he reckons I can, and I get thrown and hurt. And, and he goes, well, what would you do that for? Well, I'm not the same as you. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's an inherent danger when you don't know what you don't know. Though, yes, isn't there? yes. And so, so it's, it's incumbent upon all of us in this industry to, to number one, I think, this is, you know, is to think, okay, let's let's understand why something's dangerous. Yeah. But more importantly, I think, let's have an attitude that says, let's not let this thing hurt us today or anybody that we care about. Yeah, that's right. Let's let's get them to a case where saying we're saying, well, I know I can do that, but the old girl might need a bit of help, so I'll, I'll tone <laughs> it down for her. Don't they always? <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you what you're doing wrong anyway. Um, but it's just, it's just getting that, that change of mindset, and that comes through hearing stories like you've spoken about and making it real, not making it this potential danger that could happen and you tick the boxes. That won't cut through. Absolutely. Sharon, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you for coming along. Cool.